Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video episode on the Forgotten Weapons Library. I'm Ian, and today we're going to take a look at a gun that is definitely not forgotten, the AR-15. Uh, and specifically, we're going to take a look at the gas impingement system that it runs on. Because I think a lot of people recognize those words, but not a lot of people necessarily understand exactly how the AR system works, and how it's different from the other gas impingement designs out there. So, let's start by taking a look at a cutaway, so you can really see exactly what's going on in a direct gas impingement rifle. Alright, so there are a couple of direct gas impingement rifles out there other than the AR, and I figured we'd start by taking a look at this Egyptian Hakim. Now, you can see up here that there is a gas port right into the barrel, and it runs gas into this steel tube, which comes back here to where the bolt comes in, and that is just a hollow, open just an open-ended tube. So gas from the barrel comes blasting out of here at high pressure. Now you can see a little cutout here where the, the gas tube comes into the bolt carrier. And when we pull this back, that's what's happening when the rifle fires. Uh, and just pushing this back is enough to uh, can the tilting bolt up and allow it to cycle. Now the other relatively common gas impingement rifle other than the AR is the French Moss 44 slash 49 family, also the 4956. We have one of the 49s here, and you can see the same sort of system right right here is again the exact same sort of thing. It's a gas tube that comes straight out from the barrel. High velocity, high pressure gas from right here hits the front of the bolt face, pushes it back. Uh, this rifle also has a tilting bolt so that when the, the carrier goes back, it cams the bolt up and allows the rifle to unlock. So these other gas impingement designs are, are all pretty similar um, and they work on the same principle as basically the first direct gas impingement rifle, which was developed by a, a French weapons inspector named Rossignol. Uh, back in 1900. His rifle and machine gun were experimental and they never got built, but they used basically the same action. Now when Eugene Stoner put together the AR-15 design, and AR-10 design, his system is a little different. It's still direct gas impingement, but it kind of has a twist on it. So we've got an AR-10 and an AR-15 bolt here. We'll pull them apart and take a look. So one of the important things to notice here is that on both the, the Hakim and the Jungmann and the French Moss designs, the gas pressure is coming in above the line of the barrel. And it's putting a moment on this system when it moves. So that this is creating a little bit of muzzle climb for the shooter, because this force is above the recoil force of the cartridge. Now Stoner wanted to do it differently. What Stoner wanted to do was to have the moving parts or the, the force impinged on the parts, be directly in line with the bore, so it wouldn't create any muzzle rise. And his system does that. What he did differently was that this isn't just a, a solid plunger that pushes back. This is a continuing tube that comes down here and opens up into the inside of the bolt carrier. One thing you'll see on a, an AR bolt, and everyone, uh, everyone knows about this, but I'm not sure everyone really thinks about its implications, are these three little gas rings. This is because the inside of an AR bolt and carrier forms a gas piston. So that when this is set up, the bolt is sitting right about there. Gas is let into the bolt carrier right under this point. And what you do is you get a, a high pressure gas between these rings and the back of the bolt carrier. That gas expands, of course, and it forces the bolt to go forward. The bolt is the piston part of the system and the carrier is the sleeve part of the system. Now this explains why the gas rings on an AR bolt are so important. If you don't have these gas rings, you'll have a lot of gas blowing past uh, the tail of the bolt here up towards the front. This will get things a lot dirtier and it also means that there's less pressure available to work the action like it's supposed to. So I'm sure there are a lot of AR owners out there who are completely aware of what we just discussed, but uh, hopefully we can put it in a little bit of context. And uh, for you guys who may own ARs or not own ARs and haven't ever taken a close look inside, I hope you have a little better understanding of how they work now. 
Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Tune in again to ForgottenWeapons.com for more uh, cool gun mechanics.